Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Happy Monday, everybody. A little late start for us uh, today, but we uh, come in today with a little uh, different look. Uh, Oh. The new configuration of The Mike O'Mara Show. Please welcome our newest co-host. No. Hi. Uh, Carla O'Mara is here, and Hi. she is wearing one Woo! of the brand Woo! new, Woo! shiny, uh, fresh out of the box TMOS hats from the uh, TMOSstore.com. And uh, look at this. All right. Oh, different colors. Oh, look, look at this. At look at that. All right. Look at that, America. Yeah. Options. Right. Look at that. Choices. We all love choices. All right, there you go. All right. Mike, can you uh, give us a little more background on the model of hat? Because you're a hat snob. You are. Um, all right. So, so Flex Thank Fit you, Carla, has uh, Flex Fit has changed over the years, and there are different kinds of Flex fit, Flex Fits. This was uh, flying blind because I wasn't quite sure how the adjustable Flex Fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the cool thing about the adjustable flex fit is that it's got the stretch of the flex fit and the adjustability of the velcro strap, which means it's going to fit everybody. That's and great. That is the best thing. And when it comes to being a hat snot, this is what's the term when it, when it's firm? What do they call that? The uh, they call blue that the steel. F- yep. Blue steel cat couldn't cat cat <laughs> couldn't, couldn't scratch, scratch it. it. You yeah. bought a hat too. <laughs> You got a boner too. Um, when he can write on this, and he can't write on the soft stuff. Yeah, I don't remember that. It's Sorry. a it's a firm front. Preapism. Yes. You know, if I'm selling a car, yes, I'm going to know I how can, to give you I the. Can it's help an Aston you Martin. It. You're not helping. It's well, Ferrari I'm, Blue. And now, just and now you you're and now you're off mic. I am off mic. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I can help you. Um, so it's a firm front. Okay, TMOS. Mm-hmm. And um, these hats are also hybrid hats, and they it's a are, Flex Fit One Ten. Yeah, it's a water- oh the One Ten. I love the One Ten. Yes. Don't mo- don't be mocky. Don't be mocky. That this is a good quality hat. The One Ten is the premium Flex Fit hat. All right, here is the deal. Uh, Carla is here because she runs our store now, yes. and mm-hmm. uh, she's going to be getting these hats out to our listeners. The uh, the hats go on sale when Friday. Friday. Friday what time? Yes. Um. I haven't figured that out yet. No, no, no. No, I'm just no, kidding. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. They will be nine up nine. and ready to go Friday morning, 9 a.m. Nice. Oscar, you are nice. correct. Nine Friday Beautiful. morning at 9 a.m. Yes. Mike, there's a feature you haven't mentioned yet is the double embroidery. It's TMOS on front, but you haven't featured the back. Exactly. Oh, okay. They, they have the Mike O'Mara Show legacy logo. Love uh, it. On the back of the uh, the hats. So there. Love it. Blue, red, black. And the one Carla's wearing, which white. is white. white. And I'm here to tell you, your hats are on the way, boys. You're getting them uh, probably tomorrow or the next day? Yeah. Couple I days. definitely yeah. priority to Love it. mail Thank them. You. They should be there in two days. Again, this is a hybrid hat. It's water-resistant, breathable. Um, inside, you have a sweatband right here, which is awesome. Um, this hat is truly comfortable. I'm not kidding. And there's only about 90 of them, too. So um, We keep a low inventory mm-hmm. in the TMOS store because we have to that's the way we run it and these hats are going to be available for sale on friday they will sell out uh we aren't we are not limiting the uh sales i don't want somebody to buy all of them i hope that doesn't happen but um, at the same time you know we do have dirk we do have 90 hats to sell (laughs) so um so they're gonna fly remember if you don't buy them we won't ever sell them again exactly right so that's why we do low inventory if this is um a great uh, progress with selling if they sell out quick then the please, paisley ones will be then for then sale. trust me i'll have some more you know back in stock very very soon so we just have to see how this goes you know i'm just starting it's out be i wonderful. just need to prove yes. myself yeah. thank you carla yeah you're welcome love it thank you yeah all right okay cool mike awesome. you look dissatisfied Perfect. I'm happy. No, no, Mike's scared, just like I am, but Carla needs to leave before Carla, we can talk Carla about... Carla scares both Please. Oscar. We can talk about Carla, the dictatorship Car- that Carla, is the TMS uh, store. Carla scares Oscar. Yes. 
No, I don't think Carla, that's true. Carla, I'm going to say a few names, and you tell me what you have in common with them, all right? Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, Ding or Buzz, please. Uh, okay. Mike, you can be the arbiter. Oh, oh. Lennon. John Lennon? No. No, Vladimir H. Lennon. Vladimir Lennon. Oh, shit. Hey. Stalin. What did she say? <laughs> the S word. That's Stalin. Not okay. Stalin. Stalin. Make a note of it. Yeah. Joseph I, I've Stalin. Heard of, I've heard of that person before. Mussolini. Well, yeah. Mao. Mao. Kim. <laughs> All of these leaders have this in common with you. It's their way or the highway. Yep. And I'm Touché. proud to say I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be part of your uh, fiefdom here. We will do as you say, because <laughs> after like our Sunday uh, marketing uh, conversation, I left there shook. And if, oh. if people are keeping track at home, I just had a mini stroke, also known as a TIA, this is after true. a conversation with Carla two weeks ago. So when Mike said, hey, Oscar, what do you think? I texted, didn't even get on camera. I said, I'm scared of your wife. <laughs> but we're going to win. We're going to win. This is an amazing amount of power, Carla. How does it feel? Um, I just really don't know what I should say right no, now. No, I'm self-aware. I'm okay to be scared. I'm scared of dying. I'm scared of Carla. I'm scared of my wife. We're good. We're good. I love you guys. I really yes. do. Yes. And, um, Give and me America, some grace, okay? this woman believes in you so much that she she literally has curated these cat hats for two months. Found the embroiderer. Mike tried to ruin the relationship with the embroiderer. Carla saved it. No, they, we. I ruined the embro uh, oh, the relationship it's, it's with been the first so one. So much fun. Correct. Yeah. So all and then the pain... finally she said to me and scared yes. me by saying, you're not involved anymore. And Correct. he still wanted to be involved all until the pain I had to tell him not to be. That this woman's gone through, he you cares. come through for her and yes. you show her what the power of her running a store is all about and you sell these things out in a couple days. Oh my gosh, guys, if I could sell these hats out, not in a couple days. Now hold in on, day. we have to mention one last in thing. In two hours. Excuse me, thank you, There two will hours. be the regular hats. And there will don't be... Don't mix the message. Don't mix the message. Don't mix the message. What's the... Yeah, don't. Yeah, just let's start with the hats, please. She's going to yell at us. She's going to yell at us. Oh, no. No, I won't yell yet. I thought we were not going <laughs> to talk about the special hats. I don't think we should oh. We should do that when we announce it. All right, them, like, that's fine. We'll do yes, it on yes. the fly like this we is do the everything tease. This, this is just the tease. This is just the tease. Right. Yes, this is a save the date. Yeah, like just the tip. Wedding. Friday just wedding, 9 a.m. Hats go on yes, sale. Yes, correct, correct, correct. All right. Anything you anything you'd like to add? Um. Well, I would like to sit here and listen to what you guys are going to say about me. That way, no, can... I've said it all. I can oh, say it. To, uh, yeah, I can say oh, okay. it when we're on the air, but in real time and in person, I'm scared. <laughs> this is powerful. This microphone. That's my show prep out. today. Oscar yes. is afraid of my wife, and so am I. Yeah. Hmm. Mike. Hmm. Mike literally. Oscar. Re I mean, um, recoiled Rob, in the Rob, conversation. Rob. 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 What yeah. do you have to say about this? I don't deal with you enough to garner any fear, but I'm okay, sure good. that if I got to know you, I would be scared witless. <laughs> I love the fact that you're no mercy. And yes, you're this also, is true. She's also no compromise. Oh, compromise God. is death. Okay, for listen, listen, I'm not perfect, okay? We're not perfect, but I love that. Look, this is what makes the good the and show And I great. have a lot Our, of learning to do. We are all okay? learning. We're all learning. We're mm -hmm. all learning to say yes, Carla. And I'm yes. not used to being a part of a team, okay? There we go. There oh, it is. There's no, there's and, no and I in team. There it is. I don't want to be a team. I know I you don't. Work I want to work I couldn't agree with you more that you don't want to be a team. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, you're not. No, I, I don't am. think you're you not. are. You're telling the truth no, right now. You no, are telling the no, truth it's right now. Hard. It's hard. But you are hard. telling the truth when you it's say you don't want to be a part I, of a team. That's not true. That's true. really not true. It's true. It is hard when you have yeah. a vision. You, you want to do it your way. Your way. And then you have other people inputting. I'm just not used to it. Oh, ours. You'll you'll edge us out. Especially Don't worry. Guy. You'll outlive at least me. We already know that. Oh, um, she's guaranteed. She's gonna yeah. Twenty years hey, beyond all, all three of us. us. So you I, just, just... I, I might just go shoot myself right now. No, 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 no. Not before we sell yeah. out the hat. Full of Manjaro. <laughs> yeah, Let's I gotta do that. get them out. I gotta get them out first. Shoot ourselves <laughs> up with some diet drugs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, thank you, Oscar. You are welcome. I need to get involved. I'll call you. I'm starting okay. to gain weight again. It's what? these uh, blood well, we thinners. Gotta, you know, I, no, it's, just it's so you fear know, weight. Those GLP-1s have been around for 20 years, and they are 
so, so good for you, I'm for in. your health to help with involved. diabetes, weight loss, cholesterol, yep. all that stuff, heart disease, mm. everything. So I love it. Yeah. So um, please, guys, uh, accept my sincere apology. There's no need to apologize. I, you don't need to apologize. Happen. No, no. no. I'm not sincere. Off, no, no. Uh, Car- Carla, like a bitch. Great. No, you don't. No, I've never no, said that. Like no. A- I, there is, you know what? This is probably better. Um, she's a figure. She's a, she's a historical figure. They used okay. to call her um, the Iron Lady. Uh-huh. Uh, her name's Margaret Thatcher. Uh, look her up. And, yeah, I know who she is. Yeah, and then she didn't take any BS, even from the Queen. Let me That's tell you. That's right. Oh, my God. And, that, the the, and the Queen yeah. is me. So yeah. watch and the, listen, and, and we are the Argentinians. We, we, start, we tried to make a, make a fuss, and then you crushed us. We're good. Listen, I do have work that I have to do on myself. I am not perfect. All right. We're Love all good. You. God bless. Sell Thank them out, you. people. Sell Thank them out. Thank you very much. Sell these hats. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for working with Friday me. Friday morning on Thank sale. Hey, Carla. Working for you. We're working for you. We love you. On sale oh, Friday morning it. at 9 a.m. All right. Bye, uh, at guys. At TMOS. Bye. Can't Thank wait you. to get out of here. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. She's in a hurry to get out of here and fight in the Falkland Islands. There yeah. she goes. <laughs> the Falklands. <laughs> 1984. There she goes. Oh! That's about right. What happened? I got mooned. Oh, nice! You got skin to win. I like that. That's right. That something that is a, a big great win. Moon. Yeah, that's, that's why pretty, you. Yeah. That's why you're scared of her because that she holds is the power. Special. Uh, happy day after St. Patrick's Day. I'm here to tell you that uh, no alcohol touched my lips on St. Patty's Day oh. for the first time, maybe ever. God, in a long time since you Sunday were five. Sunday is not a St. Patrick. Sunday is not a party day for me. Do you no, mind centering has... your shot up a little bit? I'm so sorry. I think you're a little off center, right? Me? Oh, oh. Me? I got to go back. Yeah, to the my priest. My apologies. Shot. Sorry. No, you don't need to apologize. Yeah, I was like, wait a second. Is that me? I'm looking Oscar's at you through concerned. a teleprompter right now. So How's that? Oscar is concerned that if you leave the shot like that, she might come back. <laughs> she might come back. <laughs> I I got to tell you that just just I, we we got out of that negotiation and. Sundays are for the Lord and family. Yes. And on Sundays, we have a standing TMOS. Rob, you're excluded. No disrespect, but we just want to get things done and no shtick. So we get in and we get out. One thirty, Boom. I got out of that meeting and I was like, oh, my God. Thank God she's got she's wrangling Mike because you need a strong woman, Mike. You need a strong woman. Well, I think that's why we yeah, we do as well. Uh, successful. But my, but but my wife continued. is now it's getting continued. ideas from your wife. Well. And I don't like that. Yeah, I know you don't like that. Yes, but, they, but because your your style and her style, you know, my wife was content mesh. with not. Un, she didn't. She knew that she the highest she could get in this organization, the Santanas, <laughs> was vice president. <laughs> and but you, of course, I'm president, right? And now she thinks she can also be president. There can't be two presidents. And she said, "Well, it works my for Mike and Carla." My situation is complicated. And I said, "Mike's been married three times." He's got no voting power. He's done. Like he's he's literally he's good. I am still president of this family. She said, "But do you have to have all the power?" I said, "Well, then what's good for being president?" What's well, you that spills over into those uh, well, not those meetings, but into the business of now. And Carla is new to it, and Carla runs her own shop. Yeah, and she has uh, one wonderful employee, Carla. Mm-hmm. So Carla works for Carla. She, and she so has that absolute is, power. And she has absolute power. So that yeah. is, you know, there are growing pains in any organization. I, I love her. And, she's great. Uh, she just doesn't, she's not shy about telling you that you're She is not shy. She, yeah. has, she does not have that chip. No. I have worked with people exist. in the fruitcaking industry when, you know, I've, I kind of know what I'm doing in the kitchen. Yeah. And when someone would come up to me and issue something very strongly worded, I would usually say, at any time... Feel free to offer your opinion. She's five because, feet tall, blonde well, I'm hair. Not gonna, I'm not going to point at Shannon. Nah, I'm not going to say yeah, anything. I'm sure. But uh, she's very him. opinionated We're lucky in the to have kitchen. Him. We're yes, lucky to have them. absolutely. Be, we, hey, we, we, what, uh, are, you, are, you, uh, are you in a different studio today? Yes. Well, no, okay. I'm, in, I'm in a different studio within Podville right now. Okay, yeah, yeah yes. that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, obviously it looks different. So, Do I look uh, different? Do I sound different? It'll sound no, great on air. No, no. You look You did awesome. one thing. Uh, so so Carla and I um, changed the uh, the meeting time from, uh, we asked to change it from Correct. 1.30 to Correct. 2.30. Yes. And then uh, Oscar was like uh, somewhere 
else. In, yeah, we're building a and, sound stage. And then, uh, then something you said something about changing the time of the meeting. Like I said, that was okay when we were going to do it at one thirty, and it was really snarky. Did you know that you were yeah, because being snarky? You demanded when you said to see that? me on camera. I didn't demand. You, I just like to see. That's why we video. I don't demand. To you see said, you on "What camera. are you doing?" I said, "I'm moving stuff around with the engineers." And <laughs> you said, "Well, I like seeing you on camera." And I said, "Well, that well, would have worked like doing at one thirty time. I, that would have worked at one thirty. It was so snarky. It was so like <laughs> snarky. That was after like we're out an hour from how the house, and Carl says, "You know, we had that meeting." And I go, "Oh." <laughs> and I said, and then um, we called and said, can we move it to 2.30? Yeah. And uh, we weren't doing anything. Yeah, it worked out. Earth shattering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just running yeah. errands and stuff like that. But uh, that's what we're they're doing. They're effective. We just, they're they're effective lot. meetings. And now that we have Oscar, uh, since he has the floor, yes. uh, moving to our next thing. It's been a busy, busy time at TMOS as Correct. we are mm -hmm. we are moving things around. You guys have been very busy uh, dealing with customer relationships. Yes. We are doing the very best we can, and we are change is not always easy. And so bear with us. And uh, Oscar, anything you want to throw in is fine with I me. I want to first thank... All of the wonderful people that um, subscribe to the bonus show and who are monthly and yearly subscribers, um, you've been very generous and very kind over all these years, and you continue to be. The majority of subscribers have been ported and moved over to the new platform, which just soft launched. Soft. I mean, soft, soft, soft launched last week. And, and was, Oscar said to me maybe three months ago that there would be... Uh, there'd be bumps with a, with a soft uh, yeah. launch. Yeah. there would be bugs that had to be yeah. ironed. There'd out. be bumps yeah. and bugs. So there were there was pre we were prepared for this. correct. That, that so be told um, you know some of I think it would have been a smoother launch if I hadn't had a mini stroke and lost a week of QC. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's life. Yep. That's true. But and they offered it, they offered me. us to push it back for the launch. They said no, let's just launch it. We got it. We got to just launch it. We'll figure it out. So we launched it. There are people that are wondering right now, like, how do I listen through an RSS feed? Don't have to explain what that is. Mm -hmm. If that's one of you uh, and you would love that, it'll happen. The bonus show subscription, you can, you'll be able to do that. We're right now. We're forecasting by the end of the week. Uh, if not, early next week, you'll get back to your RSS. You can port it into your uh, any app you'd like. No problem. You just got to authenticate it. So if you know what I'm talking about, that's you. Cool. Um, and then for the rest of you, this is the rollout for um, the show. You'll be able to listen to it and you'll be able to watch it. You'll be able to do both at a higher level once our new app is deployed, which will happen within 30 to 45 days. We want to make sure there aren't as many bugs as there are with the platform we have now. It's going to be much easier and, to use. And it's going to be so much mm -hmm. easier. But clean, this is clean. just the beginning. When I say it's just the beginning, because three months from now or two months from now or maybe 30 days, this entire experience will be should be frictionless for, for the entire uh, American family where we ask you to subscribe through the website because then that way Apple doesn't take their 30% or Spotify doesn't take their 15%. Um, and that really does help the show. But more importantly, these features that you see currently on the new bonus show site is just the tip of the iceberg. What we have planned with features that are currently locked behind uh, cl the closed doors are just going to blow your mind. And it's going to take us to this next generation of TMOS. So for those of you that are having you know, some growing pains, please feel free to email bonus at com. Shannon and I will help you there. For those of you that are enjoying and patiently waiting to get the RSS feed on the way. And then for any other feedback, it's all welcome. And you know, for us, we had a platform that we put together with twigs and berries and sticks and servers that served us for 14 years. Yep. Nothing can last yeah. forever. Right. So we had to tear it down to the studs and rebuild it. And um, it's exciting. Yes, uh, and super it, exciting. Might, and, uh, you know, I, I would say one thing regarding... Um, Just one thing. Listeners, listeners that are, that are out there. We have been pretty clear about who you contact and how you contact people when there's yeah. an issue. What frustrates me, and I'm just going to give one point of frustration, when someone goes on a public thread on a fan club to say, you know, 
I'm having trouble, blah, blah, blah. Mm. This is my individual problem. And then with a sentence, somebody says, you just do this. And then the person says, oh, I'm a dummy. I think that could been could have been solved without having it always have to be, mm-hmm. look at me. I want to tell everybody, you know, we have. How about you tell us when we're funny as well and you love the show. Thank not you. just when you hate us. Because mm-hmm. we need, we're all, we've said it before, we're performers. We need pats yeah, on say, the back. Say, Oscar, but, you know, nice haircut. Like, way to yes. go. Like, mm-hmm. Amen. Thank Amen. You, your English is improving. I'll yes. take that. Right. <laughs> That'd be a backhanded compliment, but I'll take Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Was it so, bad before? It's with pure. that said, I like anybody that's engaged. And my God, there's been engagement on the show, not just regarding the new platform, but on everything. Yeah. When it taught, when we, they talk about what we, I, I love reading the, the, the negative comments about salt burn. Yeah. That makes me happy, mm-hmm. happy, happy. I love that. So, yes. Moving, moving on to like another uh, happy story in a way, but a serious story. These are story all happy well, stories. All happy yeah. stories. Rob Spiewak has uh, completed uh, two years of sobriety, and uh, he is very proud of that. And, he, and we're very proud of Rob that he has uh, done this. And, uh, you wanted to come in and discuss that with everybody, yeah. and uh, you know, and you've done it your own way. A lot I of have. people, uh, you've done it the own way, which was, uh, you know, you did it on your own. Um, and you know what? What I'm going to say here, um, these are things that I have figured out over the last two years. And my actual sobriety day was March 16th this year. And I encourage you guys to pipe in with questions, please. And I also want to say that this is about my journey. And I think I have a lot of overlaps with other people's journeys, but it doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. I'm not a doctor, so but this is what I found. Can out. can you just before you get to the victory lap, tell everybody what got you here? Oh, what got me yes. here is two years ago, I uh, had some symptoms. I was throwing up blood, and went to an urgent care. And they said, well, what you've got here is something a little bigger than we can handle. You need to go to the ER. Mm -hmm. And I went to the ER, and uh, they took some blood, took some x-rays, looked me over as a physical specimen, and they said, you're drinking yourself to death. How much do you drink? Did they actually say that to you? Well, they basically implied there was one orderly that was really open about it. He said, you know you can't drink anymore. It's going to kill you. An orderly said that? Yeah, like a, he wasn't like a nurse. Like the fat boys? He, not like a disorder. Rated PG. Like an attendant, not a nurse. Yeah. Just a guy that would like push your, uh, like your bed from place to place. He says, I've been through it, and if you keep drinking, you're going to kill yourself. Was he an older guy? Uh, I'd say f- a little older than me, maybe 60. Did he look okay. like Michael Landon? He did not. He looked like he'd been through the ringer. And he said, uh, I've been through what you've been through, and uh, you're killing yourself. And it was, it's funny, all the doctors and stuff I talked to, I remember that guy better than all the doctors that came um, through the room. When I was in my 40s, I think I was in my 40s, that I, that I, it's the first time I ever encountered a friend who was so saturated with alcohol that it ended his life. Yeah. And he was a younger man than me. This is in his, I, I was probably in my mid to late 40s. He was in his late 30s, early 40s. Mm. And it was the first time I became aware of what that substance can do. You yeah. know, you hear about it all the time. You hear about people, you watch TV shows, alcohol this, alcohol that. You hear about, uh, you know, the drunk driving, blah, blah, blah. You right. hear all of that. But you never, when you see it with your own two eyes and you see what physically it can do to somebody. Yeah. And the person I went to see with my old pal Jimmy Cerrito in the hospital was uh, yellow. His skin was yeah. yellow. He was completely... Body his, stops functioning, stops his clearing. His liver it. had uh, stopped functioning. So the difference is Rob um, is uh, a guy who is gregarious on the show. He's quick with a joke on the show. He is always very uh, affable when we travel. He's the jester when we go on a road trip together. What I, what Rob also is is, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, hmm. you are secretive. You don't let anybody in about anything. Yeah, so happy you would go sad. home. Yeah, I compartmentalize. Yeah. I do, and I and, it comes and you from would a go home. And we had nobody 
nobody at work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought that I, I, you know what I thought the extent of your drinking was. I thought that you would go overboard at a certain function or two. Yeah, I had or a no, holiday party, right? That was a or a holiday yeah. party. I I had no friggin' night because everybody in this trifecta, Oscar, Mike, yeah. and Rob. We have all had our moments where we've uh, We're imbibed also too much. Different degrees of alcoholics, right? Let's Probably be so. And yeah, but I was the most steady. Drinker. You were the most boring. It was, a, it was the and most. And nobody knew it. Yeah, it was no, like undercover. No. Nobody had any idea. Did your wife know it? Well, yeah. I mean, she knew what I was drinking, and I addressed that. But in she the moment, didn't think you had a. You were killing yourself. I don't yourself. think so. She didn't think I was. She thought I drank a lot, but I don't think she so, thought I was killing myself. Rob. Or she would have done something more. You know, she would have done the something. The only time I ever was like, oh, my God, Rob may have a problem because I'm just blind to it. Because yeah. we're just, and honestly, like, this is a broken business. Like, everybody around us sure. is Sure, like, everyone's broken. got a yeah, problem. Yeah, it's, it's a whack and, business. And you're rewarded for doing crazy things. But when you busted yep. your nose up at um, one of our holiday yeah. parties and you missed your daughter's yeah. birthday dinner. As a matter of fact, it's on here. I said, oh. alco- one of the things I learned yeah. is that alcohol makes you make bad decisions and bad decisions beget bad decisions. And like, if you take a drunken bloody header at your own office, when you're surrounded by friends, you force Oscar to clean up after you get sent home with an intern driving you and you miss your daughter's 18th birthday dinner. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a time that goes by that I don't think about that and realize what a tremendous, tremendous problem that is? In retrospect, I didn't see it at the no, time. I, I you like, think it would have been enough, yeah, but it wasn't. I kept drinking for bad, and you know what? Again, a bad decision to keep drinking after that. Another thing I found out after two years is that it can be rewarding to quit, because I've had dozens of people reach out and say, "How did you do? How did you feel? How do you do it? What are the good and the bad? Do you miss it?" And every one of them, I've said, "You know, you can do it. It's in you to do it." And I hope if it lands on one person, that's great. I've also learned you save a lot of money. I mean, whether it's a $16 beer at a concert or a $20 cocktail or, you know, booze is expensive. And then the doctors and the copays are killer. So you save a lot of money when you get healthy. Also, this is something you might not think about, but this has really been a big deal for me after two years. At any time of any day, I can go out and drive somewhere. Mm. I couldn't do that. Because you know what? Once cocktail hour rolled around, I had a few drinks. Never happened. But if my kids needed to be emergency picked up somewhere, I couldn't do that because I'd had drinks. I so never you, but I mean, wait, you, it, it, it was more than that. You were, you were S faced. Yeah. Yeah. Every Drinking night. Every night. I drank every night. But I mean, and you were S faced every night. Yeah. Yeah. I drank to a point of drunkenness and then to bed. Every night. Yep. Wow. Did you? Can I ask this question? Yeah, of course. Um, I, you know, we, Oscar was so right about it. we all have our different degrees of alcoholism. We do. Yeah. I have no hesitancy in saying that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have, uh, when I get rolling, yeah. not nearly what it used to be, but when I would get rolling, I wouldn't have the off switch. I wanted yes. to go on and on and on and on and on. And what I couldn't do, uh, in the best circumstances, I couldn't do hair of the dog. If I had a big night, right, a hundred percent chance I was going to feel like doing it again. And yeah. when you see people like on a weekend that you know wake up in the morning and do that, you know I'm having a drink. Uh, it's just uh, it's it's craziness. Did you feel like crap every morning? Ah, uh, it's nice not having a hangover. Uh, every morning I wake up, but I got used to it. That's just the way I felt when I woke up in the morning. It's like a little cloudy. I had an extreme Excedrin addiction. I would take Excedrin every morning, almost like you would take a vitamin tablet because it would stave off a headache if one was coming or if I had one. It has caffeine in it. It's a faster caffeine delivery system than a cup of coffee. And yeah, I mean, I just got used to having it and... You know, that's an idiot. That's an idiot. That's a bad decision right there. You know, you drink and you wake up like that. I got used to not feeling good. Mm. Bad decision. Um, I've also found, and I've talked with other people about this, when you quit, you may get depressed. And that's okay. Because what you've been doing, and what I've been doing for two years, 
is coming home and hiding inside the bottle and not dealing with anxiety, grief, depression, sadness, because you can hide from it with the chemicals of the alcohol. And as the smartest thing a therapist has ever told me, he said, those feelings are patient. Mm. They're not going to go away. And when you sober up, they're going to be there and you got no alcohol escape from them and you have to deal with them, which I am doing right now. But it's sad. There's a lot of sadness that I staved off. I had the year 2023 was like the hardest year for me ever. And I had no escape from it. I had to face all of it. And you know what? That's good because you're not hiding from it and it allows it to go away. And again, if you get depressed, don't blame yourself. It's you dealing with what life throws at you. And it's did you deal with it primarily braver. alone? Yeah. 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 I'm not, I'm not a talker. You know, I'm not, I, it's, my family was what? always, no, no, no. About his like, emotions. About emotions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you didn't want to go to a, you never had the desire to go to, to get a counselor, to get my a sponsor whole, to do that type the of The way my family grew up, it was always, we sort of kept to ourselves and we didn't do that. And that has changed. You know, the world has changed that way in the last 15, 20 years. But 50 years ago, no one in my family, they would just say, deal with it. You know, you know, buck up, do better. And it's not, there's no crime there. Um, I also found out, and this is a hard one, that drinking doesn't define you. And I really thought it did. Every day, one of the things I look at is the memories on Facebook. And there are hundreds and hundreds of posts of me posting about alcohol or some stupid comment I made and someone offhandedly saying, Rob's into the crown again, you know, just saying that's who he mm -hmm. is. Well, you know what? That was a part of me, but it's not me altogether. And when you sober up, you have to learn to figure out who you are, what you are yeah, and to you find are. yourself. Yeah, I can right? totally see that. And it's, again, it goes back to a little bit of hiding in the bottle. You don't have to find yourself if you're drunk. You know, it's just you. And it's really sad. And it's one of my regrets is that I look back and I see that sort of coward's way out of just saying, this is me. I'm happy. I'm having a beer. It's uh, the Kentucky Derby. The juleps are at my house. You know, big, all that stuff. And then pictures of you, like, at a family gathering, a beer in my hand. That's that's so trashy just looking at it like you're not there to like hang out with your family just you know put it down don't let it be such a part of your life i've also and this is this is a weird one drinking does not make you funnier i always thought it did i really did and i thought about this i talked to my 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 counselor about this my my therapist can i interject it, here yeah hangovers make you funnier Hangovers do make you funnier Sorry, because you have, have to, to deal with that. them. That is true, though. Sorry, uh, it true. takes the filter off. But you don't need them to, change my to mind be funny. No, you don't I, need them. Nope, nope, no, not saying that I need them. But boy, they make you funny. We have some of the best shows we've ever had. Go ahead. I, th I think going back, and I'm not blaming anyone but myself, so you have to understand that this is my fault. When I first started in this business, I was plunked feet first in the middle of a lot of grown-ups. I was 21, but I was a kid. And I'm surrounded by people that I've listened to on the radio most of my life. I'm surrounded by other people that are just to me, they're grownups and they're, they're out and they're partying and you don't just want to keep up. You want to fit in. And I obviously didn't need to do that. And then you get the impression, you know, if you're goofy and you're off the wall and you're pounding drinks and making people laugh, maybe it's making you funny. Mm. I don't think it is. It makes you sloppy. It makes you annoying. You're probably being an a-hole, chances are, because you don't have the filter that makes you understand what's appropriate and what I'm thinking of some of the live shows that we did. Yes. And the only time, and this is important, the only yeah. time we, and I'm probably including Oscar on this, would yeah. ever be aware of you drinking to the point where it was not cool yeah. was at those live shows. Yeah. Because you would just... The timing. Your timing yeah. would go out the It'll window. And it's you would, true. It would. It's uh, true. It was interesting, though. That's. Uh, that's. I have uh, it here. It says drinking does not help you in a live performance. It may give you the guts to go out there, but it's going to dull your wit. It's going to totally screw your timing, and you're going to be in another zone 
where you're trying to entertain something that isn't the audience. Mm-hmm. It's going to it's going to mess bad decisions again. It's going to mess with your judgment. It also doesn't drinking doesn't make other people more interesting. I've often said this That's that true. if you can drink but when you get down to it if you need to drink to talk to somebody like that they probably don't want to talk. Mm. Leave them alone. Don't press it. You know what? If it's selfish is what you're doing mm. is you're getting yourself lubed up so you have someone to talk well, to. Well, I'll give you a great example. Okay. When I owned my restaurant, mm-hmm. I would be, uh, I'm not making an excuse, but when I would be uh, going off the sauce for yeah. a month, two months, six months, I hated being in there. Sure. Because I would be aware of how many people were inebriated that wanted to mm-hmm. talk to me. Mm-hmm. That I had no interest in talking to unless I had a cocktail or two. Yeah. It's the same thing like when you call people, even loved ones, when you've had a few drinks. It's, yeah. uh, it loosens you up. It and does. So I get, I get the idea of, uh, you know, hey, if I have enough drinks, I'll have the courage to go up and initiate a conversation. It's funny. It's every, also, everybody does that. I've, I've learned that, that drinks. drinking does not make social engagements more tolerable. Um, if you need drinks to go to a class reunion or a meeting of some sort, if you think that you need it to make it tolerable, that's a problem. And what you really should do is be a grown up and go there for two hours and then go home. Just be polite. That's all you have to do. If you drink to a point of where you're going to be the life of the party, quote, quote, again, you're just being selfish. It's a look at me thing. And the alcohol lets you do that. And then the blaming of just saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I had so much to drink. Well, that's weak. That's a stupid excuse. Did you ever go on apology tours? I have, yes. The morning after? Yeah, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. I did. There was a supper club we did where after I put the steaks on the table, I literally put the platter on the dining room table, set for eight. Everyone there, I said, that's all I can do. Good night. This was in my home. I cut out on dinner before we served That's dinner. That's nothing. That's well, it's pretty bad. I mean, nah. it's you're not be, well. Don't worry yeah. about that one. All right, I can let it go. Yeah. Oh, I can. I can fill a book up. <laughs> You've never I'm had not to make a pleasant, an apology. I'm not a pleasant drunk, and it's no. the worst. Mm-hmm. It's caused but, a lot of grief in my life. I, it, it's, it truly it's has. a bad I mean, thing. I, I mean, I, I'm, you're, you're, I like hearing you say this because I, I don't, I don't think Oscar or I have found anything to disagree with you about. No, it's actually it's, it's, it's striking a chord with me. I'm just being completely candid. You're like, you're right. There's so many things that are so much better without it. Yeah, oh, it, it really Saturday is. Saturday morning with a clear head and a bright sunny day. Unreal. Now I will say this: there are moments I'd be lying if I said it wasn't this way. I miss it. I miss the way it tastes. I miss the way a beer goes with pizza. I miss the way a red wine goes with steak. I miss the pairing of them. I miss the flavor. I miss sometimes if it's been a rotten day, I miss the way that it could relax you. But you know what? You don't need it to relax. You don't need it. You don't. And I had, I was given the chance to be a grown up 32 years ago and I blew it. I overdid it. So anything that happens now, it's my fault. I can't do it. If you stay sober, I found you're going to lose some friends. And that's okay. Because the friends that are not sticking with you, if they need the alcohol sort I just want to say I'm sorry about that, Rob. <laughs> you moved away. <laughs> you did. You that did. had nothing to do with sobriety. But the... <laughs> If they friends. need that, if they need that alcohol, if they need you to not be sober for them to be comfortable, that's on them. And you probably shouldn't have been friends with them in the first place. Could be one of you the reasons. You want to give us names? You, yeah, the supper club doesn't meet anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah but I mean, was, it's just there was divorce, right? Yeah, but also, but also, it begins. I don't have a lot of friends to begin. Got it, with. Got it, yeah. So it's hard to make friends but, as you get older, especially when you're yeah. sober. You're like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Do but the real ones, I'll tell you this. Polls? What are we going to do? This is the one I realized. The real friends are the ones that continue to reach out to you and ask how you are, and they keep sodas in their That's fridge cool. for you. That's, I mean, it's a small gesture, but it means the world. And this sounds a little new age, and I'm not a new age guy. But after two years of sobriety, I'm more present. I'm more available. I'm more approachable. I. How do you think it feels when you find out for years your kids – hesitated to talk 
to you in the evening because they found you unapproachable. Oh, my God. Well, that means drunk, you know? And kids don't ever deserve that. And I, the wasted years, I mean, I'm by all rights healthy now, and that's great. But I wish I had those years back. I can never get them back. Selfish. Absolutely selfish. And it's my doing. I blew it. Thank God my kids are fantastic. I adore my children. I just spent a week with Robert, and I marvel at what a great young man he's become. And I feel that it's amazing he was able to pull it off because I was not present as much as I should have been to help him turn into that. And it hurts, man. It really hurts. And if you stop and you think about it, it's really sad. And it's, you live life based on regrets sometimes. And that's one that I can't shake. I can't shake that. Either one of them. I mean, again, I'll just say that I'm very, very blessed and happy that they've turned out well. But I wish I could have been more help. Um, you're going to need to set something to look forward to. Because I was... Is that, your, is that the only people that you want to apologize to? Oh, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to, what? I'd like to oh. apologize to all my coworkers. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, you're going to need to send something. I'm sorry, Oscar. I just thought there might be like, one just like he said the sweetest thing about his kids. You're like, what about yeah. us? Yeah. Well, also, Mike, you were sorry. fully formed by the time I met you. I didn't yeah. really need yeah. to. We were guiding him. I do. <laughs> into fatherhood. Um, yeah. I, I, so. I was the... <clears throat> absolute definition of a ritual drinker. It's how I ended every night. And I'm a guy that likes routine. I'm a guy who likes rituals. And without having it there, that felt like an empty space. But you can fill it with something. You can walk your dog. You can listen to an album. You can make your... I found it incredibly helpful to make a cup of tea because you're having to do stuff. It's a ritual. You're preparing the tea the way you're preparing a cocktail. But you have to have something to look forward and it, it sounds minuscule, but it's really, it's what got me through the day and gets me through the day. And I think finally, the most important thing that I've learned is that you finally see yourself as others see you because you can't hide behind the bottle anymore. And it may take a while. Uh, it took me literally months to embrace the word alcoholic. It did. But I was one. I am one. I'll always be one. That's one of my, that's part of my makeup. I just was selfish. I made bad choices. I turned into that. And that's why when I say two years sober, sober rather, it means less to me than it used to. Because when you do a, something numerical, it's like you're counting up to an event or counting down from something. And I can't get close to a conclusion with this. I'm done with it. I can't drink anymore. That's who I am. I didn't, I can't quantify it. It's just who I am. So, um, I mean, I will always mentally know that I've made it X number of months or years or whatever, but I'm not posting it on Facebook anymore because there's no point. It's there's no the need years to are important. It. I guess Where maybe, but you know what? It's it's not like there's no countdown. It's yeah, not going to end. I think like the the months are also are important. If if I if I may, um, you are actually doing a, a greater service by sharing this. Because of the platform we have and mm -hmm. our audience base that we have, is that the new platform or the old? This platform? is this is the, this is being being a podcast. The new sober broadcast. platform. This, this has nothing to do with the TMS Bonus Club. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The TMS Bonus. Uh, uh, you know, please Damn. subscribe all day, right, folks. I just save this I man's it, uh, liver. <laughs> um, so, what I what I can tell you as a friend is that hearing you say all of these things and then remembering where you were as you were coming out of this, like as your brother, as your coworker, as your friend, as your boss sometimes in different, world, different lights, I am so, I'm, I'm just so proud of you. And I can't, I, I, like, I want to say something funny and I want to like, you know, do something fun, but I just got to tell you I love you and we're here to support you. And I think our actions speak louder than the words they have, they continue. Well, you you know, I love you guys yeah. and I wish I could be proud, but I still got too much stuff to deal with that I'm not proud of right now. I just um, wanted to say, um, we're up on a break. Um, 
and we we have to uh, we have to go to a, a break right now. I see. May yeah, I say one other thing? Yes, you may. before we yes. break. Yes. All right. And I wrote this down because I wanted to say. It. Hey, somebody's got to be the monster. It's fine. I'm. I, Oscar takes the bullet for being the monster all the time. I want to be the monster today. No, uh, I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm. I'm proud of you. I really am. I'm and, very very proud of you. That's a no small accomplishment. That's a big and, part of your life. That's and fantastic. I want you guys to know. I know you're joking about it. I couldn't have done it without the support from within the Michael Mara show. I could not have done it. I couldn't have. Um, you guys were both so clear from the word go that fix yourself, then come back. And that sometimes, you know what? I said it earlier. You guys are the friends that reach out. You are the ones that said, hey, you do you. Yeah. Get better. Forced and come you to go into therapy. Yes, it's true. So and I hope it helps because want- you're still seeing the lady. I I want you guys to know that if you think you're an alcoholic, if you think you may be an alcoholic, if your friends or family worrying about you being an alcoholic, you are. If you drink to excess and you comfort yourself by saying, oh, I can handle this, you can't. You are an alcoholic. Now, I'm not condemning drinking. It's fun. Tastes good. I love it. I know it was great. I just invite you all, watch yourself. Don't get yourself in the situation I was at. If you want to talk, I'm amazingly reachable. And if I can help you, God knows I had enough help myself. I would love to do it. There's no shame whatsoever disease, yeah. in at least checking out the program. And you can do it by calling 1-888-4-ALANON. That's 1-888-425-2666. I pray that you don't need it. But if you think you might, check it out. That's the day. Work the program. Do what works for you. And I just hope some of these words landed with you. And thanks very much. It's selfish to take this time. Selfish guy. Still selfish. But uh, I hope these words landed, and I hope it helps some of you people, because it's been a weird, long journey for me. We're still and, on it. Uh, and we're yeah, on I love it. it. And so that's it. I love so it. What do you, like. uh, last word on it, what do you see for the future? Well, let's finish the show so I can get something to drink. <laughs> no. No, no. I mean, for the future, I'll never drink again. I just, I mean, I will not. I also, I got no problem with people drinking. I got no people, no problem with people drinking around me. I like to see people have a good time. Always have. Just, I can't be that guy anymore. And I mean, there's just certain things that I've, I've ruined for myself. Can never take an aspirin again. Can't take sleeping medicine. Because all that stuff that goes through the liver is going to tax it. Now, my liver has rebounded to a certain extent. But, but not 100%. Not 100%. I mean, it's not going to be, at least as we stand now with the checkups that I get on every six months basis, it's holding steady. It's no longer in decline. It's doing the job it needs to do. But I don't have the option to push it. So... It happened two years ago. I've got to just be a new guy now. And not to say that I've cured myself. I'm still an alcoholic and will be till the day I die. That's why I have to be so present and aware of what's going on. And so I hope that whatever takes me down, it ain't related to this mm. because, uh, you know what, I've, I've worked pretty hard to, to get past it. Congratulations, Rob. Yeah. A round of applause you, for this. Seriously, I, all jokes it, aside, with time checks and uh, and all of that. And it has been not only going through your health care, but then following that with one of the worst years a person yeah. can have. Really difficult. And uh, it, it's just uh, coming out on the other side and having this. And hang in there. We are uh, behind you 100%. We do Thank love you. you. And, you know, we all look in the mirror, too, and nobody's perfect. That's the way it goes. But I think you probably helped some people today. So we I hope so. I mean, I'm, a, I'm not a – I never thought of myself as a pretty strong guy, but I got through this. I guarantee you, if you want to get through it, you've got that strength in you, too. So Amen. go do it, Keep folks. We, we'll take a break and uh, come back with the roundtable on the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, whoa. And uh, thank you for, uh, for listening, and thank you for taking the time. And if it helps you or a friend of yours – let Rob know. We'll be right back. Discovering quality kids' clothes just got easier because Caden Lane has cracked the code. 
Founded in 2005 by a single mom with a passion for creating better and cuter clothes, accessories, and keepsakes, Caden Lane is on a mission to make mom's lives easier. Caden Lane is more than just hype. They have over 70,000 five-star reviews and millions of satisfied customers experience softness like never before and add personalization that makes Caden Lane the ultimate gift. Already thinking about summer, Caden Lane's new swim collection is here for worry-free fun in the sun. I remember when Michael was that age. Mm -hmm. It's so important to keep your little one's sensitive skin safe. And they have UPF 50 sun protection swimwear. It's the big deal. It works. And the Color Me Pajamas allow kids to color their own PJs. This is the brand you've been waiting for. Caden Lane is your one-stop shop for all your newborn, infant, and toddler apparel. Head to cadenlane.com slash TMOS and use code TMOS for 20% off your order. Once again, that's C-A-D-E-N-L-A-N-E dot com slash TMOS for 20% off. And make sure you use the promo code TMOS so they know we sent you. Look, it's the Kraken. Balls. Remember when Jeremy Renner almost died last year from a snowplow accident? Do you remember that? Did they teach you that here? Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, during his stay in the ICU, Jeremy says, Robert, you want to know why I'm mad at you? Because you fight with my wife. That's why. And I'm still reaping the benefits. And everybody, my wife, my life right now is is topsy turvy, and I am keeping it in my pants. So that's that's the real answer. And I don't want to say anything more about it. But I'm doing the best I can, and nobody knows it's a difficult time in the O'Mara household right now with hats and the store and the meetings. It's very hard for me right now. This is how you run a Oscar. successful business. Please the, understand that. So the least you could have done, Oscar, is is put yourself on video on Sunday. Come I on, was on man. video. <laughs> uh, we ended up uh, here's here's the, Robert Downey Jr. constantly checked in on Jeremy Renner. Now you wouldn't think those two would do that, but this is another story about Robert Downey Jr. who, to me, comes across Authentic. when he's accepting yeah. an award or yeah. doing an interview as kind of a pompous ass, but then you hear about all the stuff the guy does yeah. after what he's been through, and he sounds like maybe he's a pretty decent dude. Uh, here's the quote from Jeremy Renner. We ended up having really great chats on FaceTime uh, like we were dating or something. He's <laughs> like, dude, the most important thing is you look good. I don't care how you feel as long as you look good. Like Fernando Lamas, look good is all that matters. Robert also joked that uh, Jeremy needed to get back to work on Mayor of Kingstown uh, because he and his wife were watching it. Jeremy says, quote, his ways are very heartwarming. Iron Man director John Favreau also said uh, that Robert Downey Jr. is, quote, Somebody who, even when he's not working, he's still connecting. He really keeps relationships going, and he's always checking in. Now, Renner's in the Marvel yeah, Universe as well, Yeah, they've worked right? together in various films, so the idea that yeah. they're mm. talking is, is thoughtful, but I just... And they're, they're both dreamy. Yeah. Well, but Renner yeah. almost died, right? Literally almost died. Yeah, Renner, of all, by all accounts, as far as everything I've read, Renner is also a good dude. Yeah. A very, no, very the nice work he person. does for, for Children's Hospital is yeah. amazing. That's that. I mean, and he's done nice things individually for fans. Eddie Vedder uh, took one of his daughters to a Taylor Swift concert and was reminded of the camaraderie of the punk rock community he grew up with, uh, as he always says, being aligned with all the misfits. This makes sense. I get the connection here. I like this. I like this. Uh, Eddie says, quote, making friendship bracelets with her, his daughter, Mm. and the generosity of these young girls and boys trading these bracelets with different messages on them, lyrics, song titles, just acts of goodwill on uh, these little bracelets. Uh, They had found their tribe. They were all agreeing on something. It was galvanizing and powerful. And by the way, that's another reason I'm probably not all that happy today. Because Why? the tribe down here, uh, it's getting worse for oh, me. Oh, no, what's going on? Down here. It's get, the tribe. The tribe, the political tribe. Down oh, here. okay. Yeah. I'm, it, it's, it's, as, it's as, as though every day that is counted, I'm getting more and more. Like, you really think? You really, and it's getting just say, a little overbearing. Just say you're, fighting for, you're you know? here for democracy. And there's only one candidate right. that says they want to be a dictator. I'll get I'll get right th- I'll get right on that. That should go over well. Uh, the inventor of karaoke has died. 
Thank you for pronouncing it right. Well done. (laughs) Karaoke. Uh, He was a Japanese businessman named Shigeki Nagishi, uh, and he lived to be 100 years old. He invented the first karaoke machine in 1967, all the way back in 67. Wow. Uh, After one of his employees made fun of his singing voice. It was originally (laughs) called the Sparko Box. I didn't know any of that. Great Sparko box. Nagishi never patented his invention, but his daughter says that never bothered him. Quote, he felt a lot of pride in seeing his idea evolve into a culture of having fun through song around the world. Uh, In his honor, someone did a survey and conducted some research to determine the 30 best karaoke songs for people who can't sing. I'll give you Ah, the top 10. Oscar, this will be good for you. Uh, Just the Way You Are at number 10. Just the Way You Are, Bruno Mars. Great song. Great song. He has a good uh, song. Number nine, Summer of 69, oh, Brian Adams. It was the summer of 69. Met Brian Adams in good London. guy? Canadian. Yeah, I mean, very brief. Very brief. Met a lot of people. Same night. Just brief. <laughs> Brian Adams, Boy George, George Harrison. Same That's night, cool. same backstage. That's the George Harrison one A-list, is one A-list, that A-list. You, you, can, you can go to bed on that. Classic here at number eight, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. If you uh, can't sing, you should not sing Bohemian Rhapsody. Is this that? But they, but the tracks for no. karaoke have you uh, with all the yeah, other I suppose, stuff there. Yeah. Uh, number seven, I Will Survive, Gloria Gaynor, of course. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, number six, Dancing Queen by ABBA. Every God, you know WVU what? karaoke night. Oh, yep. every karaoke at O'Mara's, yeah. Dancing Queen. Oh. Same, and the same man sang it. Yes. No, I'm kidding. It was wonderful. <laughs> uh, number five, Wannabe by the Spice Girls. That song has zero melody. Let them have it. Number four, uh, this might have been one of Mike O'Mara's when when he would have a few cocktails back in the day. Love Shack by the B-52s. Everybody get your jukebox money. I couldn't see you singing that, but now I guess, yeah. I I because I did an impression. I always did an impression of That's the guy. That's great. French Schneider. Oh, perfect. If he used you to see me and Brian and Chrysler, it's about to set I can see sail. It. All right. And we yeah. got... You would bust that out, Mike, during the Yak Shack, remember? Yes. You would sing like that? Absolutely. It's yeah. about to set sail. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, don't Stop Believing, Journey. Given. Of course. Uh, number two, Living on a Prayer by Bon, bon Jovi. Jovi. And yeah. uh, we'll only play one guessing game with number one. What do you think number one is? Uh, say Mac the Knife. No. Classic. Close. Uh, Close in a way. Boots are Close in a way. For walking. I remember hearing that all boots the time. Boots is a good guess, yeah. No? Uh, I will give you one hint. All made right. famous at a sports venue. Ah, Mr. Dan Man. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Dan Man by Mike O'Mara. <laughs> he is a dream. No, uh, Sweet Caroline by Neil. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. The Sorks. Yeah. The Sorks. Yeah. 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 Touching uh, me. That's a, that's a yeah. great list. Not a bad list. It, yeah. it is a good list. It, I and, like and there were All the ones on the list were good. I just shortened that. Uh, the site Eat This, Not That ranked the 25 unhealthiest drinks on the oh. planet, and somehow turpentine didn't make the list. Hi, 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 hi. Sorry, I was rushed today. Didn't edit that out. Uh, let's see. Arizona green tea. They, let me see. They, they did the sugar content. All right? All right. Uh, number one, naked blue machine juice. Never had it. 55 grams of sugar. Uh, let's see. Naked mighty mango juice. Same company. 57 grams of sugar. Naked. Number three, Monster Energy that, Drink. Yes. Oscar, don't Not drink them anymore. Number four, Arizona Sweet Tea, 53 grams. Be sweet. Uh, <laughs> number six, Starbucks Frappuccino, 47 grams. Mm, 47 grams of sugar in that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mountain Dew, mm. 46 grams of sugar for a regular <laughs> Mountain Dew. I love the red one. Welch's Grape <gasps> Juice. You would think grape juice, healthy, huh? Wrong. Wrong. 44 grams. Uh, be careful of fruit juice in general, it says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, number, uh, I always pronounce this wrong. Is it Barg's root beer? Barks. Barks. Barks yeah. root beer, 44 grams of sugar, and Arizona green tea, 42 grams of sugar. That's weird that that one root beer would be an outlier because I think most root beers taste pretty much yeah. the same. The don't teas they? are actually shocking to me, and they shouldn't be. Yeah. This, we, are, mm. we are seriously running out of time. I have to skip right I know, to because I'm here. a blabbermouth. Uh, let's, since we're on the health kick Please, right now, we're helping let's, people. Uh, let, let, let's get, that's right, yes. we're helping people. <laughs> uh, what is the healthiest dish at the Olive Garden? Oh, man. It's got to be a Susie. salad, right? <laughs> the waitress, Susie, with a Z. <laughs> with a Z. Susie with a Z. Hi, Susie. 
<laughs> well, I can say as someone who's uh, lost a lot of weight that yeah. uh, one of my go-tos is this protein almost okay, all the so time. Okay, so is it the veal? It's the shrimp. Oh, shrimp, damn. of course. The shrimp go. scampi is the most nutritious pasta dish pasta. on the Olive Garden menu as it clocks in under 500 calories and comes with a heart-healthy produce like asparagus and tomatoes, all seasoned with a light garlic wow. sauce. Uh, but what about the breadsticks? Ah, uh, <laughs> therein lies the problem. Yeah. All that yeah. you want. Yeah. All of them that you want. Soup, too. Lots of soup. And if you soup. really want to have fun, put one where the sun doesn't shine and run around the dining room floor. Between two pillows. Mike, that's be right before I stop drinking. There it is. Yeah, I still do it. I still do it. After a big glass of Olive Garden Chianti. <laughs> the best uh, in the we, world. We have to take a break. When we come back, uh, let's see. Hmm. You want to, can we, is it too soon to talk about the gentleman? No, this is great. No. Yeah. Timely. Is I that love okay? It. Perfect. All right. And then later on, we're going to talk about a new comedy legend that uh, you have seen Early, or you're going to I saw to see. this past Saturday. Fantastic. We'll take a break. Come right back. You're listening to the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Electric e-bikes. It's getting to be springtime in the nation's capital, and everyone is waiting for their favorite sound. <laughs> no, not the lovely sound of the red... No. Not the lovely sound... No. Not the lovely song of the Robin Redbreast. They want to hear Oscar on his electric e-bike. Oscar is zooming around. Are we playing it? No, because it's so quiet. You can't hear him. The electric e-bike is too quiet to hear. <laughs> there it is. It's right there in the copy. <laughs> Might have read that before the show. Oscar, <laughs> do you love it? I, I, I rode my bike this weekend. It was 70 degrees here in the D.C. area. I rode it to work. No problem. That's so Riders great. of all abilities can explore with electric e-bikes. Go to electricebikes.com to learn more about their wide selection of e-bikes that start at just $7.99. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com. It has a durable feature. It has durable features and accessories for added safety, convenience, and control. You can save on gas, parking, and maintenance. And financing starts as low as $49 per month. Plus, electric e-bikes fold up, ship free, and come pre-assembled, pre-charged. You'll be on the road in no time, and it goes 150 miles an hour on one charge. Zang. Explore 200, 2000, Explore 2024 with electric e-bikes. The most accessible and adventurous e-bikes ever. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more and be sure to mention the Mike O'Mara show. Great session. partners. Great partners. Thank In you. the them. post-checkout survey, yeah, uh, fill it Please. out. Mention us. Please. That's yes. L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E-R-I-C. -E -E That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E-bikes.com. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. All right. The gentleman, uh, you guys got me on it. Have you both finished? It? I'm done. Yeah, yes. watched, we watched it. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. I have to say, I texted both Oscar and Rob over the weekend. Uh, yeah, a ten. Regardless, yeah. of my wife says it's for guys. Yeah, maybe I it is for it guys. Two, but I, didn't I watched think so. it in two days. It was I phenomenal. Stop Did you it? set yeah. it up for Guy Ritchie? Yeah. Guy Ritchie. Nobody, nobody does British tough guys like mm. Guy Ritchie. He finds. The baddest ass looking guys and the scariest looking guys. And it's apparently a wealth of supply over in the UK for Guy Ritchie. These guys, I can't even count how many badasses are in this. And then you throw in uh, the good looking aristocrat and the cool cat woman lady, and you got a crime thriller. And then you throw the guy from The Departed in, the henchman, Jack uh, Nicholson's henchman in mm -hmm. The Departed, who is a spectacular actor. And God damn it, I should be giving everybody his name, but I didn't. But he plays the father, uh, the, the Mac granddaddy of the crime syndicate. It is fluffy. It is fun. Oh, it's, it a, is it's a roller brutal. coaster. It's great. It's, it's got everything. But most importantly, it is an escape. And it's just such a rarity. I realize that when you dive into a television show where, you know, Rob, you talked about, you, you know, getting out of yourself and going somewhere else. You yeah. can do that with uh, with content like this. You can really you just can. immerse yourself in it. And uh, I tore through it. It was it absolutely took me fantastic. Two episodes to realize who the guy was, the, the star of it, where the, I knew the, him the from. Duke? Yeah. Who, who is, is that? From? Because everybody, my wife and I were saying, who is he? You remember him from the White Lotus. Yes. 
the white lotus. He was lotus. the douchey there it is. husband. Yeah. Yeah. It took me forever to figure yes. it out. That's right. That's right. And a fantastic mm-hmm. actor. Uh, boy. I like his brother better. Oh, his brother's spectacular. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's a romp. Yeah. If you really. It is. Now, all right. What, to answer what my wife's knock out with, it's a guy's thing. Do you think it's, uh, is that somewhat accurate? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, Carrie Shen liked it. Enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's yeah. enough good looking guys yeah, there in was, it, right? I, yeah. I felt like it was an action, like comedy. It was great. Action. It's an action yeah. crime great tone. Yeah. comedy. And great tone, and yeah. beautifully photographed, and beautifully acted, and beautifully the actors, edited, and the and boxers, the characters, the mobsters, the new characters that come. About. What what episode are you on? The Christian what episode are you on? The fundamentalist Christian drug yes. dealer may be my favorite. I mean, the, the creative, the out of the box casting mm-hmm. to put that guy in there is just oh ooh la la boy. Just and meeting. Mike, there's a finger in the drawer. <laughs> Fantastic. Great show. <laughs> the gentlemen, check it out. Please do. We would love to have you do that. Uh, yeah. We've got another record coming up, and I'm kind of excited about this because I love, love, love hearing about new comedy finds. And Oscar went to see a guy live that he's been raving about. He will tell you about this. And don't forget, another reminder, our hats, TMOS hats, brand new and for you this Friday on sale, 9 a.m. We'll be right back. Uh, Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, Liquid IV quenches your thirst faster than water alone. We are now uh, down here. It's going to be cool tomorrow, but we are getting right into the beginning of what will eventually be 90 to 95 degrees every day down here. And you can't go outside without your Liquid IV because it quenches your thirst faster and hydrates you faster than water alone. Three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Liquid IV does it all in a single delicious stick. No sugar, no artificial sweeteners, non-GMO, and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. And man, oh man, there is a flavor profile. And I know they don't want me saying this, so I won't say it specifically, but I, I just beg you to try your favorite little sports drink and then compare the flavor that you're going to get out of a liquid IV. Huge. You're going to love it. I love them all. Uh, lemon, lime, uh, peach, white peach, green grape. They're fantastic. Uh, I grab my Pizza Hut cup and I'm off to the races. <laughs> However you hydrate, grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TMOS at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. Oscar, uh, did you go to the improv this yes, weekend? Yes, the DC Improv. Great, great venue. We put it is, and now. you know what? Invariably, any comic loves the DC Improv. They, it's they a just perfect love the way stand-up it comedy room. That's yeah, it really for. is. It's a fun place. Yeah, to go. and I think we. I went through this. Oh God, when I saw um, Chris Rock, I bought the tickets uh-huh. like six, seven months ahead of time, and um, the dates creep up on you, and you're like, oh my God, it's here. Yeah. Oh, and. Rob Absolutely. was on campus on Friday, and he saw me in real time. Be like, "Oh my God, I have to figure out what these ticket when these tickets are right for right. a comic." Yeah, I, I, that happens yeah. to me all the time. It's 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 scary because you're sitting there. Did I miss it? Uh, when is it coming? Do I have something on the schedule? Correct. Yeah. And it gets so up. Uh, right. this guy Morgan J. Um, if you look him up, you'll see all his dates are sold out through September, unless he's added dates in new cities. Uh, mm-hmm. I saw him pop up on my TikTok feed in October of last year and it was so funny I immediately looked for dates and he had uh, he had some of the DC improv this past weekend which had been March 14th and I ended up going with a couple friends um, Kim and Scott they met us there Shannon almost bailed because she's an introvert <laughs> and yep. uh, she finally showed up and we made it just in time show was at seven I was there with Kim and Scott I was like this is gonna be awkward if my wife doesn't show up but she made it and the show starts and I didn't know what to expect because you're going – I'm le- I'm legit going to see a comic that I saw a handful of TikToks. How does that translate to an actual show? A full stand-up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I was I, I was nervous for our company because I was like, I hope they're into this because this is a lot of relationship comedy. Can you give me uh, a, a sentence about – He calls himself the ethnic Mac Rife, Matt Rife. The ethnic Matt okay. Rife. 
Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Not a bad guy to correct, hit your wagon correct. to. He said, right? without the muscles and without being white. Does he do a lot he of crowd work? He does so much crowd work, and he uses auto-tune it's, at such a level that it's just funny. He has auto-tune awesome. on yeah. stage? sold me already on that. That's yeah. fantastic. And one of his bits is, like, he starts off the show, he starts singing. Like, he can sing all right on his own, but when you auto-tune, you sound great. So he's walking around yeah. the he's walking around the comedy club and he's expecting people to sing their name. So if you watch it, you have to sing your name. And mm-hmm. so many people freeze in real time that he then chastises them and says, "You knew you were coming. Like, why you? <laughs> Is he good with the guitar? So Does great. he play the he guitar plays the well? Guitar. See, and that's a, that's a big deal. What I felt like I haven't felt this in some time, man. Maybe because we we don't go to enough comedy shows after the pandemic." But I felt like I was watching somebody's star in real time grow because he was so not, it, like he was shocked that everybody knew the words to the songs he sings. Like he stopped and was like, whoa, like, he, you know, you're in the moment and it was happening. He goes, this is actually happening for me. He's been, he's been a comic for 17 years. Wow. wow that's a long is time. Is he uh, and, and with this particular uh, when he does the songs, he has. Pre-done songs. Yeah, that, he's that done if you before, watch his TikToks, that... you you know the words, so you're singing them back. You're singing them with him, and and like he had that moment on stage where he po- stopped and was like, "This is happening." He, just like when we, like I'm, we did a live show, uh, one of the first uh, live shows, if not maybe just uh, the House of Blues or when we were in Circus Circus and walking out on that stage, and, I, and like I, I remember having a moment being, I be, I can't believe this is happening. This is wild. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's in he's the in moment, the moment, and he's. Digging what's yes. uh, what's going on. I mean, it's like when you're trying to explain a comedian. I think we're good at it because we do our own version mm-hmm. of stuff. And when you explain that, I mean, the parameters are all there. If he can play the guitar and he does crowd work and he's got these parodies that are, and it's different than DJ Correct. parody songs that Correct. I blow yeah. up all the time. Uh, so what would you uh, ten? Well, ten I, out of ten this, for it, this guy. You could also tell he's like working on his craft. I'm no comedy. I'm not Rob Mayer. I don't know enough about the craft. Well, he's also at the improv and he's not at, uh, you know, at, uh, at a yeah, Coliseum yeah. yet. You know what I mean? Right. No, he, the idea that when I signed up, when I bought his tickets, they weren't, they weren't sold out till about two months ago. And then, okay. and I went on his ca- concert calendar, the fact that he was sold out till September. And he said that this is finally happening for him and he never thought it would happen for him was such a moment that he still worked. Like even when they came out, people are just used to crowd work. If you see a crowd work person, even like a Matt Reif, you're so used to like, yeah. you're going to do crowd work and that's it. That you could tell that he's honing his craft because the the host said, hey, he's got a bunch of new material he's working on. Please don't yell out because you're so used to people yelling out for crowd work, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he right. worked right. He worked on great. his craft. So you see it in real. I, I was just so happy for someone like that. Pick to click. Yes. Uh, his name is Morgan J. J. Check him out. And, uh, you know, check him out yeah. on TikTok. He's on check Instagram, him out uh, when you get an opportunity. Yeah. And uh, don't try to check him out when he comes to a city near because he's uh, sold out. Sold out. That's Very the way cool. that goes. That'll be bigger. And by the way, the, in comedy, he won't be sold out in the small venues because right? he'll yes. be moving up. Yeah, they'll yeah, move well, on I think I'll, we won't see him in a small venue again for some time. Won't be happening again. Uh, we got to take a break. When we come back, uh, we have the flip side with Mr. Rob Spiewak. Uh, this past weekend, two years sober. We will return right after this. Did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? 80%. Get ahead of it with Nutrafol, a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. Take their hair wellness quiz at Nutrafol.com slash men for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. You can purchase online with no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. You'll see results in three to six months. Thanks to Nutrafol, Oscar is seeing thicker hair, and he has a sickness for the thickness. Oh, baby. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code TMOS. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter promo code TMOS. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code TMOS. The 
Philip Sully. Colorado. Colorado. I want to warn you that some of the material in this tape you might find triggering. But it is our duty to cover the news, is it yes. not? Yes, it is. All right. This is the chief of police in a town in Colorado with a guy who is a, uh, a repeat offender. And I don't want to blame anybody for having what they love to do. You know, everyone's got their love of hobbies or kinks or whatever it is. But watch out in Colorado. And for God's sake, let's stay out of the produce aisle. Content warning. Content oh, warning. Content yes. warning. Yes. Hello, Fort Collins. I am Jeff Swoboda, your police chief, and I want to let you know about a truly disturbing case that Turn we are up a little currently Mac. investigating. Many of you will recall because we did a couple social media posts, but starting last summer, we had an individual going around town and masturbating at various coffee shops. He was trying to get the attention of people who work there or who were uh, there just to buy coffee. Well, we ultimately made an arrest on a Stephen Masalta. That's good. We made an arrest and we did a there search warrant in February of this year. Mr. Masalta has been in custody since that arrest. After the search warrant, and we collected multiple pieces of evidence, electronic evidence, we started to analyze that evidence. As we went through that evidence, it was clear that Mr. Masalta had committed many more crimes. There were other victims in our community. Oh no. You see, Mr. Masalta, was an employee at 1426 East Harmony Road, yeah. the Safeway. Oh. He was employed there for about two months. Safeway, Rob. Yeah, I know. During that two start. months, on the videos, we can see that Mr. Masalta had masturbated and ejaculated on multiple <laughs> items of food in the store. It was items of food that weren't commercially sealed. Oh, no. Yeah. Again, we have many more videos to go through. You do. But in what we have already a seen, lot of we have multiple victims and we have multiple felony charges against Mr. Masalta. There is no doubt because of the number of videos that we have still yet to look at, <laughs> that there will probably be more victims identified. Thank you, Mac. Um, How does this I think cross that I your should news desk? Like what's, what do you subscribe it just, you to know what? this comes up? It's all Fluids. over my feed. I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, Mike, I, That's I, I so bring, nasty. I bring you with this classic old jingle. Food is first at Safeway. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one, Rob? <laughs> Everybody! Hope you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, so I'm going to let that set there for just a second Woo. and go to my closer. Mike, I promised you this last yes. week. Uh -huh. You said you'd never heard it. This is in 1957, and it sort of puts stuff in a chronological space that I didn't consider. George Carlin, when he got out of the Air Force... Got a job at 1480 KJO, 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 KJOE in Shreveport, Louisiana. KJO. And this is an actual air check and opening jingle of your favorite comedian, George Carlin, in 1957. It's time to smile and swing a wine with Carlin. Anywhere. It's the cool this record man anywhere. Get set to listen, cause here we go on the George Carlin Show. Great shingles. It is. Listen. Okay, then, solid. How you doing? Lots of music coming up for you between now and 545. Got the brand new Everly Brothers record, and we'll be playing both sides of it for you. In addition to listening to Elvis's latest, came out this week, and we'll get things started with the new one by Chuck Berry. Stick around. Good things happening here on 1480 at Carlin's Corner. Because here we go on the George Carlin Show. He had a donut. Yeah, and he nailed it, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. cool. That's yeah. awesome, man. Well, anyway, that's all I got for you. And it's amazing to me that when you look at George Carlin in the 70s and 80s, he was breaking Elvis records in 1957. And you didn't, you could, you wouldn't recognize him. Because no, he was clean cut and all that yeah. good stuff. At uh, Carlin's Corner. <laughs> we got to take a uh, pouty. Uh, we'll be back with a brand new episode tomorrow. And thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks to Carla you, for Carla. dropping by with our brand new hats. Thanks to uh, Rob for giving staying a wonderful alive. message to those of you out there and staying alive for this show. And thank you all for, and thanks to Oscar for not making me too much of a monster today. You did good, Oscar. That's what I'm here for. You're you speaking English, Oscar. You kept me in line. And your English is better than ever. <laughs>
<laughs> That's how he pays you back. Uh, for Robin Oscar, this is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. We hear you, and we stand with you. The power of Christ compels you!